Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for EllenHudson.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am sharing several projects featuring the brand new Strawberry Fields stamps and dies along with the Berry Basket die that is new for the March 2022 Essentials by Ellen release. I absolutely love the Strawberry Fields stamp set and I'm gonna be using the coordinating dies as well. And I wanted to show you I actually keep my stamps and coordinating dies all in the same pocket. So when I order the stamps and coordinating dies, I actually have an extra pocket left over for other things. And I will show you how I use that extra pocket here in just a bit. So I'm taking the two strawberry dies and the leaf die, and I'm positioning those on some Nina Solar White Heavyweight cardstock. I'm holding them in place with some pixie tape, and I'm running them through my Gemini Junior. Now I'm gonna do this several times because I wanna create a bunch of strawberries all at once. And I wanna show you my new favorite way to do this, and that is with using the negative die cut space of these die cuts. So I'm gonna cut several of these. I'm just realigning the three dies there together, holding it in place with the pixie tape and running it through my Gemini Junior. I will tell you that this pixie tape comes up very easily. And I think that that could be good in some situations, but it's not great for all situations. I do like it for holding die cuts in place, and I think it would be good for working with foil because it won't pull up the foil. I haven't tried that, but I'm assuming by the amount of tack that it wouldn't pull up or damage the foil in any way, so it would be great for that application as well. So now you can see I have all the negative portions of these die cuts, and I'm trimming out one of each to use. So the double strawberry, the smaller strawberry, and then the leaf. And I am going to use these to help me position my die cuts on my Misty. Now, actually I did two of each and we'll get to that in just a second. So now I'm taking a piece of scrap paper and placing it into my Misty. And I am going to position my stamps on the scrap paper. I'm actually going to stamp the stamps first and then arrange the negative die cuts around it. It is much easier than trying to lay the negative die cuts down and then try to align your stamp inside the negative die cuts. So I have these spaced out so that I have room for all of the negative die cut pieces. And then I'm going to take ink, and it doesn't matter what ink you use, you can ink these up in any color for this initial stamping. And I'm going to ink up all these stamps and stamp them onto the scrap piece of paper that's inside my Misty. Now just for reference here, I'm using Catherine Pooler Lemongrass ink and Concord and Ninth Grapefruit ink for my initial stamping. I'm gonna change up my colors throughout this. And you can see I've stamped them right onto that scrap piece of paper. Now sometimes your paper moves after you pick them up, like the stamps kind of stick to the paper and kind of move it out of the way. So just make sure it's tucked up into that upper right hand corner. And now I can take the negative die cut pieces and I have switched to the delicate surface painter's tape to hold these in place because I wanted to make sure that they were gonna stay in place. That pixie tape comes up really easy, but I'm gonna be doing a lot of stamping with these negative die cuts in place, and I wanna make sure that they're gonna stay in place over and over and over again with a little bit of bumping and nudging too. So you can see I've aligned the negative die cut pieces with just a little white gap like they would be on the die cut, and I've held them in place with the painter's tape and now I'm positioning my plain white die cuts into the negative spaces. And the negative spaces are going to hold those die cuts in place while I stamp on them. And because I already know exactly where these stamps are going to stamp, the stamps are gonna stamp perfectly onto the die cuts with that little white outline left over. And I love this method. So I've inked up the strawberries here with some grapefruit ink and added a little bit of the Catherine Pooler Coral Cabana ink to the bottom with a blending brush. And now I'm inking up the leaves with the Catherine Pooler Lemongrass ink. I, as I mentioned before, I actually use a different color combination on my final projects today. So I'm just kind of getting my color bearings here. I just re-inked my Concord and Ninth Grapefruit ink pad and it is intense. So I think I might've put a little bit too much ink on the pad. I went back and added a little bit more of that Catherine Pooler 
Coral Cabana right at the bottom, blended it out with a blending brush and then stamped onto the strawberries again. And you can see I have all of my stems and leaves stamped as well. So once the initial stamping of these die cuts is complete, I can take them out of the negative space. I actually switched to my tweezers here in just a bit. And I'm going to switch them out. So the part where I stamped the pink part of the strawberries, I'm going to put up so it can have the stem stamped. And then where I stamp the stem, I'm going to stamp the strawberries. Still using the same colors ink here. And the next stamping is where I'm going to switch. So you can see how easy this is to stamp perfectly on the die cut pieces. Now here's the colors I actually use for my projects today. I use the Catherine Pooler Lemongrass ink for the stems and the leaves. And then for the strawberries, I use Concord and Ninth Ballet Slipper and Concord and Ninth do, -si do And you can see I have a bunch of beautiful strawberries stamped and some plain white die cuts ready to go in the future. Now I wanted to show you how to assemble the new Berry Basket die from the Essentials by Ellen collection. For this basket, I am using the Distress Heavy Stock in Craft. And the cool thing about this die is you can actually create one box with each piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. So you can see I've cut the first piece and then I've gone ahead and rotated the die and placed it on this half sheet of heavy stock and I die cut it a second time. And I'm gonna die cut this a total of four times. So because two of them fit on a half sheet, I can get an entire box out of one letter size sheet of cardstock. Now I'm gonna take and I am going to fold on the score lines that the die creates. So you can see there's gonna be this little lip on the basket and I'm folding that towards the outside of the basket. And I'm folding the bottom flap towards the inside of the basket and the small side tab gets folded towards the inside of the basket. Now I'm placing some strong double-sided adhesive on the inside of that flap that's going to fold down towards the outside of the basket and on the opposite side of this little tab. So you can see that here. So I'm just adding it to the bottom portion and then I'm going to remove the backer from the adhesive. Now these little tabs connect the top of the box and because you want to fold this lip down towards the outside of the basket, I go ahead and do that on the first piece and then I line up that tab, the score line of the tab, with the corner of that next piece of my basket. Then I can fold that down. So you can see I am creating a chain of these. I'm now gonna remove the backer that's on the adhesive on that next tab and connect it to the corner portion of the next piece of my basket and fold down the flap that goes towards the outside of the basket. That's just kind of a like an extra added detail. It also helps to hide the flap. So once again, I'm just connecting the fourth piece. So they're all connected in this chain and the flaps are held down on the outside of the basket to cover the little small flaps that kind of hold them together. So I'm gonna connect all this. It's gonna create a rectangle and then I can take and fold in the bottom pieces towards the inside of the basket and adhere all of this together. So I'm going to add adhesive to two of the bottoms. And as I flip this over, I'm going to add it to the two right sides because this is folded in half with all of those pieces connected. Then I am going to stand my box up after I've removed the adhesive backer. And these two with the adhesive are going to fold in first. And then I'm going to fold the other pieces in on top of them. And that's going to hold the bottom of my basket together. Now, Julie Ebersole showed where she did this a little bit differently. She kind of assembled it the bottoms first and then went and assembled the tops first. I've tried it both ways and I think I get more precise results at the top corners by assembling the top corners first and then adhering the bottom of the basket together. But you can try it both ways and see which way you like it. So you can see I'm just positioning those flaps on the bottom in place and then I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna use my bone folder to push all of that adhesive down and make sure my box is going to stay together. And this makes a really nice size, sturdy little berry box. 
Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna decorate it with a little tag, but before I do that, I'm gonna show you something that I love to do with these strawberries. I like to take my Zig two-way glue pin with the roller ball, the squeeze ball roller on the end and just add a little bit of this adhesive to the seeds. I'm gonna allow it to dry completely and then I'm gonna grab my champagne glimmer foil and once that adhesive is completely dry, I'm going to press that onto this adhesive that dries a little bit tacky. And that's gonna give me some adorable gold foil seeds on these strawberries. And I think it's a really fun way to finish these strawberries off. Now, if you don't have foil, that's okay. There is a seed stamp in the Strawberry Field stamp set, and you could use that to stamp on the strawberries and add some gold embossing powder instead. Now I've cut this tag from the Farmhouse Tag Collection from the Essentials by Ellen line, and I am using the Painted Stripes stamp set to add just a stripe of the do -si do ink from Catherine Pooler onto the bottom, just as a little detail. And then I'm gonna take a cluster of these stamped and die cut strawberries and place that onto the tag. Now for the sentiment for this tag, I used the Casual Greetings Hot Foil Stamp from the Essentials by Ellen line. I went ahead and foiled a bunch of these ahead of time and die cut them all at once. So I have them on hand and they are ready to go for projects. And I'm just gonna adhere that onto the tag using some foam adhesive. And you can see I tied that onto my berry basket using some Lawn Fawn sparkle twine with a little bit of gold sparkle in it. Now this is great for giving treats, but I was super excited when I figured out that a set of four bar cards would fit perfectly in this berry basket. So I made some four bar cards with the little strawberries on them. I slid them into the basket and you could put a set of envelopes in there as well. And that creates the cutest way to give a little strawberry card set. So now I'm gonna move on to some card making featuring the strawberry filled stamp set. And I have my Misty sticky mat inside of my Misty. It's held in place with the magnets. And once again, I'm using the painted stripe stamp set to stamp some colored stripes onto this card front. So I'm starting with the Catherine Pooler do -si do ink. I'm inking that up and I'm stamping onto my card front. Then I'm moving my sticky mat down three squares in the Misty, holding it in place with my magnets once again. And I'm inking up this stripe again with the Concord and Ninth Ballet Slipper Ink. This is one of my favorite soft pink inks. I think it is so beautiful. And for the final stripe, I'm gonna move my sticky mat down three squares again. And I'm going to use the Catherine Pooler Lemongrass Ink to ink up this stripe. This is creating a very simple background. It's very colorful and very graphic, but it's gonna create a great grounding place for my stamped and die cut images as well as my sentiment. Now I'm die cutting this down to a smaller size using the Essentials by Ellen Essential Rectangle Dies. And then I'm gonna place this back into my Misty in that lower right hand corner. And I'm lining up this thanks for being so sweet sentiment, which is from the Strawberry Field stamp set. And I'm gonna stamp it onto this card front using the Catherine Pooler Blackjack ink. This is kind of like an off black. It's just not quite black. And I love it for things like this where I want a nice bold sentiment, but I don't want it quite so saturated. I think it works out really well. Now I'm taking some of the strawberries that have those adorable gold foil seeds and I'm placing them onto my card front using a little bit of foam adhesive. I'm just arranging them here. And then I'm gonna take this entire card front and I'm gonna add it onto a top folding A2 size card base using some foam adhesive. And I just used my T-square ruler to make sure that I get it lined up straight on my card base. So for the next card, I am going to use the large double strawberry stamp. I'm gonna stamp it in the Catherine Pooler do -si do ink and I'm gonna create a stamped background. So I started with what I want to be my focal image kind of in the upper third of this card base. And I, it's actually a card front, not a card base. <laughs> and I am going to take and stamp this repeatedly, kind of changing the angle just a bit until I fill up this card front. Now I'm not being super scientific about it, I'm just kind of eyeballing everything. 
And I generally like to work kind of from the more center outward. And I like to have some of the images hanging off the edge of the card front. Then I'm going to go back in with the little stems and I'm going to stamp those in the Catherine Pooler lemongrass ink. And I am just using an acrylic block for this. I am not being super precise, but you know what? This is actually pretty easy to stamp. So once I get all of my stems stamped onto my background, I am going to take, once again, the Essentials by Ellen rectangle dies and die cut this down. I love these rectangles because, and all of the essential shapes from the Essentials by Ellen line, because they cut not only the rectangle or square or circle, but also a thin frame. So you can see I actually popped up one of the stamped and die cut ombre strawberries that I created earlier with those gold seeds on it. And I put that on that focal image. I added a foiled sentiment from the casual greetings hot foil plate. And then I added the little stems kind of sticking up off the top. Now for my card base, I wanted to add a little detail. So I used the painted stripes stamp set again. I stamped it in ballet slipper on the left side of my card base. And then I popped up the card front using some foam adhesive. Now for today's final card project, I'm going to use the berry basket die again, but I'm gonna trim off just a couple of the flaps so that I can use it on a card front. I trimmed off the bottom flap that makes the bottom of the box and that little side tab flap. And then I'm going to take some strong adhesive and fold down the top portion there so I have that cute little decorative detail. I have a card front here. This is made from some Nina Solar White heavyweight cardstock. And I am stamping this double strawberry stamp onto the card front using some Concord and Ninth Ballet Slipper. I adhered my berry box shape here with a little bit of foam adhesive. And then I'm going to add several of these strawberry die cuts as well as the leaves and the stems. And I'm just going to kind of cover the front of this basket and this card with tons of these strawberries. I added one of the sentiments from the Casual Greetings Hot Foil stamp. And now I am kind of sliding a piece of twine through. I should have done this before I adhered it to the card front, but I didn't think of it until after. <laughs> so I'm just sliding that twine through and then tying a little bow on it so there's a little bow on top of this berry basket. So very cute. This is a horizontal A2 card, which I hardly make. I find myself making more vertical ones, um, but it turned out so adorable. So here's a look at the completed card projects. I think they are so much fun. There is so much inspiration here featuring the brand new Strawberry Field stamp and coordinating die set, as well as the Berry Basket die set from the Essentials by Ellen line. I absolutely love this set. I think it can be used for so many occasions and it's perfect for spring. And it looks so adorable with those gold foiled seeds and the ombre stamping. As always, I thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you're looking for anything in particular, I will have links to the featured products used in these projects in the description at YouTube, so be sure you check there. Or you can head on over to the coordinating blog post. That will be linked below. Over there, you'll find more still shots, more information, and a complete list of supplies. Thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you were inspired today. If you were, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here so you don't miss any of the fabulous paper crafting and card making video tutorials. And as always, I know you have a choice with your time and I am so glad you chose to spend it here with me. If you loved this video, I would love it if you would share it with a friend and leave me a comment below and let me know which of these projects is your favorite. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the very end. You know, if you've made it this far, you are one of my favorites. <laughs> if you want to subscribe to this YouTube channel, go ahead and click the button on the left side of the screen. And here's a couple more video tutorials I thought you might enjoy.